Fog blew in Saturday morning. I sat under a big white tent and drank some coffee while my chair sank into the lawn. I talked to a kid with a heavy beard in a mangled straw hat who last year, for some reason, we started calling Swagamuffin. A girl wearing a name tag passed out rosters to faculty. A guy walking behind her handed me an info packet. I sat there eating toast, looking at my notes. Other people were out there too, chatting and smoking. I said hello to a dozen familiar faces from over the years and drank several more cups. The fog burned off. A lawnmower buzzed. The sky was a flawless aquamarine blue. I had written a three-part lecture on drawing techniques, brainstorming, and plotting, and also found some handouts with exercises from last year or the year before that. We supplied them with pencils, erasers, pens, nibs, brushes, and paper, a hundred-pound acid-free Bristol board for comic applications, and a little plastic thing called the Ames Lettering Guide, which I still had no idea how to use. We were gathered on the campus of a college you've never heard of, at the end of a sandy, hook-shaped peninsula, bound by the Atlantic and scenic as hell. It was my fifth straight summer running a workshop at an annual summer arts conference, and once again my class was full. The conference had begun 15 years before as a one-day poetry festival and had grown every year in size and popularity, although the college itself had not fared as well. Over time, pieces of it had been boarded up to save money until the entire school was abandoned, then reopened in a limited capacity as a satellite of the nearest state U. The college had kept its name, which was the name of the town, which had been named after the people who'd been here since the beginning of time who'd made peace with the English settlers, teaching them to fish and hunt, helping them slaughter neighboring tribes before they too were wiped out by disease or dragged off and sold into slavery. Nada Klein, with her long French braid and dark wolfish eyes, walked through the tent with her shawl dragging on the ground. She beat cancer every year and showed up late to her own slide talks and was widely mocked and imitated. Larry Burris was back, too. He skipped his meds one year and wore a jester's cap to class and lit his own notes on fire and had to spend the night in a hospital. He stood beside me now, beneath the tent flap, patiently signing a copy of his book and handed it back to a woman who hugged him. On the faculty were many friends I'd come to know over the years as intellects, historians, wordsmiths, talented performers, Storytellers with big fake teeth, addicts, drunkards, perverts, world-famous womanizers, sufferers of gout, maniacs, liars, embittered, delusional, accomplished, scared of spiders, unable to swim, loveless, and cruel. I noticed Barney Angerman, who'd won the Pulitzer for drama the year I was born, and Tabitha Portonley, who'd written an acclaimed incest memoir. She was helping Barney through the breakfast line as he gripped her arm. This past winter, the conference director had asked me to name another cartoonist I could vouch for to teach a second comics workshop, but I didn't answer him. I worried, because of the way my career had gone, that I'd be hiring my replacement. A little before nine, I went to the fine arts building, hurrying down a long hall past students and teachers. I looked for my studio. There were classes in the annex now, landscape photography, felt making, fresco on plaster, whatever that was. When I got there, they were pulling out their stuff, giving each other the once over. I flipped through my notes. A woman who lived in town was complaining about beach traffic. A skinny kid stared at me, wearing a sundress, mascara, and a pearl choker. A young Asian woman stared at him, clutching her pencil case. A young man in a white polo, a craggy-looking old guy, and a girl with button eyes and tiny feet were talking with affection about their dogs. I opened the info packet and read the bios of the other teachers and guest speakers printed in the conference pamphlet. There were different levels of us, unknown nobodies and one-hit has-beens, mid-list somebodies and legitimate stars. As I read, I could hear my own labored breathing. I tried to slow it down, but felt worse, graying as the blood left my brain. I read my course description from who knows when. 
Mattacook College Summer Arts Conference. Cartooning Studio, semi-autobiographical comics with Rich Fisher, July 18 to 21. Tuition, $1,500, ages 18 plus. For credit option, $1,900. Are you ready to take your cartooning to the next level? Start from scratch or bring your own comic in progress to our four-day summer intensive, and we'll help you do just that. A murmuring of bodies came from the hall. Fans turned slowly over us. An old, galvanized ventilation system snaked around the ceiling. A thin woman stepped cautiously into the room, walked out, then came back in. Wild brown hair, sharp elbows, bony wrists, redness around her mouth, raw, wounded-looking lips, a long skirt, moccasins. Was she the kind of person to take time out of her busy life to make a fictionalized comic about herself? Apparently, 